do this. What are we doing? Uh, I'm just going to be like, next up on shelfies, we'll do the... It's just like... What? Yeah. Can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. What am I supposed to do? Welcome everybody to the 30th episode of Shelfies. Today, we're actually going to start at the Growler Station. And there's Rob Gas, the beer guy. What's happening? We did a collaboration for our customer appreciation weekend two weeks ago with our friends at, out at Monocacy. It is actually a red ale. So basically what happened was we put Brutus in the barrels. It was our barrel, Jack Daniels barrel. Then we took the Brutus out and we, we brewed a red ale. We aged it in that barrel for about mm, probably a month. You get some nice citrus notes in, in it. And then a little bit of oakiness mid palate. It came out really well. We're really proud of this beer. Connie's working, but she needs to try this beer. Uh -oh. Tiny bit of vanilla, citrus from the from the weight addition hops, and some nice oakiness. I actually like that. Thank you, Monocacy. You guys are the bomb. So this is a beer we actually brewed for last weekend for our customer like appreciation it. It has, beer. It has, it, has, it has a light body to it, but it has a lot of flavor to it. It's not really heavy, yeah. but it has a lot. It's real clean. I really enjoy it. Next up on Shelfies, we have a fan donation from Jay Thompson. Thank you so much for dropping off these Burley Oak Dreams for us. This one is boysenberry blackcurrant. It's got this really rich purple color to it. It's super sweet. I like boysenberry. It makes a nice color. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. That's good. All my brothers got that gas and they always be smoking like a rock star. Big often with me, call up on no is we and show up, man, them the shot toss. Next up, since this is our 30th episode, we're kind of going to... Dirty 30, buddy. Dirty 30. We've made it three decades worth of episodes somehow. <laughs> uh, our first guest ever was actually from Gunda. His name is Tim Scouton from... He also works at Peabody Heights, so Peabody Heights and Gunda, and I'm a huge fan of their beer. I mean, they Me make too. amazing beer. I'm a huge fan of Tim Scouton. And I'm a huge fan of Tim Scouton. I mean, if you know him, for... you love him. You can't do shelfies without him. Every 30 <laughs> episode, yeah. so at 60, we're gonna have Scouton back. Don't give a damn, don't your government is so goofy, she just trying to get in. Saying I'm with the band. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Tim. My man. Thank you so much. I was literally on the phone trying to get Rahul to teach me how to pronounce the beer we're going to taste. Oh. And it's something along the lines of like a combination of D and TH, which is like a Hindi thing. Okay. So it's called Dilse. Why don't we just FaceTime him? Hey. Curtis is going to put it on the screen, like yeah. right right Hopefully here. Yeah. This beer isn't specifically for beer week, but we are going to have it available during beer week. This yeah. is a double IPA. Yep. Does not drink like one. No. That is for sure. Yeah, that's like, you know, everything we do with Gunda is basically like, uh, you know, how do we make a base beer that's going to accentuate the hops mm. in the best way possible? And so this time we actually got our hands on some, on some Nelson. We got a big box of Nelson, and uh, which is incredibly expensive and hard to get hop. And so when we get it, we want to feature that. And we thought that it was going to be a little bit one noted if we used mm -hmm. all Nelson. So we ended up using a, a splash of Galaxy, of Galaxy too. So you, in the front end, you're going to get some of that pineapple and some of those fresh ripened yeah. fruit, this and then like some dankness like right behind that. But then the beer itself, super approachable. There's no heat to it. There's a wow. little bit of mild sweetness, a little bit of lactose in there. And we made this with Brooke uh, from the Wine Source, who's one of the oh, sweet. the main beer guys over there. Runs a growler bar um, for his wedding. So we made that beer for his nice. wedding. Nice. Oh, congratulations, well, congratulations to Brooke. To Brooke. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, aside from this, you know, we didn't have anything to taste today. That's why I brought this one along. Um, but we're going to have a collaboration with Wet City. That's the Fruit Loop double IPA or single IPA, uh, which has got a lot of really tropical hops in it um, that are going to play really nicely with the Fruit Loops. Does that release during Beer Week? Yeah. So that's going to be uh, Saturday, um, the same day as Oktoberfest. I think that's okay. the 14th. Draft only. Yeah. Everything we're going to be doing is draft only, except a really cool project that I think some of you, if you follow our Instagram pages, um, might know about is that we did a collaboration with Union Craft yeah. Brewing. They're they're probably the most they're well respected brewery in in the uh, in the city of Baltimore for sure, probably the state. And they make some yeah. great beer. And they reached out to us because we tied them for the readers poll for mm -hmm. um, uh, Baltimore Magazine. We were we were both rated the best or uh, readers poll voted best brewery in the state. 
Um, and so when we tied, John, one of the owners there, reached out to me and he said, you know, we should make some beer. And I was like, well, obviously. Hell and so, yeah. um, and we, t we threw around a bunch of ideas of like what kind of beer we should make. And then, and then uh, Kevin, we, we spitballed a bunch of like, oh, we'll do a dry hopped English ale and we'll do this. And then he just emailed me back. Everybody here says we need to make a double IPA. So it's <laughs> exactly. a double IPA. So Northeast style double IPA. Oh or, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we, we brought in 007, which is the yeast of choice for Gunda. It's, it's a... Uh, similar to Conan and all those things that people use, but it's, a, it's an English ale yeast that we really like that nice. we ferment a lot of our beer with. Um, but we did it uh, with them. We did 60 barrels of it. So as opposed to a normal Gunda project where it's like, hey, where can I get it? I don't know where it's gone um, just because we make so little. They made 60 barrels. So we're going to do a limited can release on Friday the 13th. You'll have approximately 20 to 30 cases or? We really don't know, but that's going to be the starting point. Cool. So, awesome. you know, with the union, uh, it's up to them. So, but we're going to. So, hashtag line life. Get your chairs. Don't leave them there. You have to sit in them, not yeah, like tired you hands. Sit in the you have chairs. to sit in the chairs. If you, if you, I will burn your chairs if you leave your chairs behind. <laughs> I have no respect for you. You got to sit in the chair. You, you literally have to keep live your ass the life. In the chair. If you're gonna hashtag that life, live that yeah, life. Not hashtag leave a line of chairs slash go drink Come beers back and later. eat tacos in the fermentaria. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, that's that that beer is uh, no bittering edition, double IPA, all Idaho seven and Citra, nice. three uh, three dry hops, two in fermentation and one after fermentation. Wow. So it's gonna be obnoxiously delicious. It was a very collaborative effort on the recipe. It was very collaborative on the hop selection and everything. And then it was not collaborative on the brewing because they are a machine over there. They just <laughs> They crank beer out, and uh, Ryan and all the brewers over there, they did such a great job that day. We were mostly just in the way. We took some pictures. and That's kinda, awesome. Tim, I'd like to say yeah, thank cheers. you so much for cheers. being the first guest on our show. That without nice. Tim cheers without Tim girls. coming on our show, <laughs> it wouldn't have led the way for us to have guests from out of state come on the show, such as Left Hand and Two Roads and all of these amazing beers that we're getting sent to this store now for Rob to sell and for us to try on the show are really amazing. Is there anything you'd like to say about the show of Shelfies the Show throughout the last 30 episodes? Anything that sticks out to you? Yeah, I just I think it's a really cool mix of, of local brewers and, and, and national brewers. And, it you know, there's nobody else that's doing a platform like this for us in Maryland. There's a couple people making podcasts and things that I really appreciate. But this, this video format and being on Facebook and stuff and just your weird antics of holding <laughs> lapel mics and whatever. I'm still waiting for the t-shirt that just has Curtis's arm right across the front of it. That's a good idea. You should send that design in. Shelfies the show on the top of it. But, uh, you know, without you guys, this person or your personalities and, and, uh, and this, this very odd format where you just have random people walking through <laughs> to buy beer um, at a liquor store, you know. There's, it's so quiet today, yeah. too. Like, usually we get one or two guys rolling yeah. through. And plus, like, you know, like, who's Gunda to, to ask for a platform you know you guys believed in us when we really didn't have much to say or uh, say for ourselves and now that we're you know tied with union for the best brewery Holla. Tied. we're here to talk about it and yeah. sell some beer yeah. there it is and so, that's going to be a huge release yeah I really appreciate those kind words Tim thank you so yeah, much for coming on the show for the yeah. second time my man oh, yeah. always Shelfies fans thank you so much for watching and Peace. I just want you to remember there's one thing that you that everybody should know What's that? Tell us. Shelfies have feelings too. Please don't call them shelf turds. Peace. Bye.